All right. Hello, everyone. Just switch on my camera here. Um, hi, everyone. Thank you for joining me again. So this is basically my third session for today because it's my evening. And um, yeah, thanks for tuning in. Uh, today I will try my best to explain and demonstrate some of our newest additions to the Tessera family, the Tessera 40X and Biamp launch. My name is Marco Hendel. I'm a member of Biamp's international applications engineering team and based in Germany. Welcome to my remote office. <laughs> so the agenda for today is rather simple. I will, um, yeah, do a lot of live demos. It's basically all about the live demo. I will do my very best not to bombard you with uh, PowerPoint slides today. Um, it has a very practical approach just to show you the new devices and to give you a little bit more confidence when you work for it for the first time or just to be prepared when um, the first projects um, are about to come to come in. So again, a lot of demos and most importantly, I don't want this to be a one-way communication. So I'm always happy to answer any questions you might have. My uh, colleague Ian, um, he is the organizer of this webinar, keeps watching the chat window all the time. So either he may instantly uh, reply to your questions or we will keep your question for later at the end of the webinar. Um, I expect this to take about 30 to 35 minutes. So there will be easily 10 more minutes to discuss any questions you may have and do a little QA session in the end. Good, let's dive right into it. Um, so what you see behind me and above me is my makeshift conference room. Um, uh, well, I had to be creative because I cannot mount ceiling speakers in my ceiling. I don't have ceiling tiles and I'm very sure that my landlord wouldn't like it if I did some speaker cutouts and hang in microphones. So therefore, um, I used this construction, but I'm pretty sure it will serve the purpose. Um, so you will see speakers and mics hanging on there. Then at the last bit here, you see a measuring microphone. Uh, this microphone is mixed as an ambient mic uh, together with my belt pack. So this will be your ears later. If we try out the new launch feature and you will hear some tones, that will help you to get an idea of what's actually happening here in this room. Good, let's look at the hardware. So from left to right, um, we want to start with the DeZono CIC6 speaker. It is a six inch ceiling speaker, which is optimized for conferencing applications. However, it's very smooth over the entire frequency range. So it does not only work for voice. Um, it also works good for program material because we expect in conference rooms, you may not only deal with voice, but also with um, presentations that contain videos. And um, so we, we want to have a, a quality sound over the, the entire frequency range. And um, that can definitely be achieved uh, through this speaker. What's very unique on that device is the coverage angle. So it has very wide dispersion of 130 degrees, which is good, especially if you have low ceiling heights. So if you work with low ceilings, um, you can get a much better coverage than a speaker that is more narrow. Also, of course, you may need less amount of speaker to cover the same area that another speaker would cover. The grill is attached through magnets, so it's very uh, sleek and low profile, like that. And the other thing that is very unique on that device is it has some mounting points on its back can, and we use this for our backpack amplifier. It is an amplifier device that you can put on top of the speaker and then patch it right through using Cat5 cables or category cables and it will be powered by PoE plus. So you only need one cable to run, one ethernet cable back to your um, Tessera TC5 or to a Tessera 40X or Devio SCX to operate that amplifier, feed it with power, with audio and control. And then you will be able to have 
up to eight ceiling speakers driven by that amplifier. It's a very easy to install, very quick to install solution. Just one device that has everything in it. Next up is, in this case, a pendant microphone. As you probably know that we have a range of Parley beam tracking microphones, and this is one of them. This is the pendant microphone that can be adjusted up to three meters down from the ceiling, so it can be brought closer to the people talking at the table. But of course, sometimes you don't want a hanging microphone in the room because there's a projector nearby or uh, architecturally it doesn't work out that well. So then we have other options, which is also um, a, ceiling, um, a table version of that microphone, a flat table version, and also a ceiling version, a version that um, sits very flat as a boundary microphone right at the ceiling. The device on top, that black box, is what we call the, the, the plenum box, pre, pretty much the uh, controller of the microphone that has all of the connections that go above the ceiling. So what you actually see from the mic is only that strain relief that allows the length adjustments of the cable. But up in the ceiling, you will have all the necessary connections for your network connection back to the DSP device. You have extension connections for further microphone in uh, for further microphones. In this case, you can use up to two more microphones. So if you consider um, a table that is larger than my table, <laughs> then you probably want to install more microphones to cover a larger area. Um, so you can connect those to that extension port and again up to three mics in one arrangement in one system powered with one Ethernet cable back to the main device. What you've seen already, I'm sure, is also the yellow connector on the right side of it. This is an amplifier output. So you can drive your speakers right from the microphone using only a single cable connection. It has two times 40 watts of burst power. So it uses our burst power technology amplifier built in, which is surprisingly powerful <laughs> considering that it's only powered by PoE+. Uh, it really has a lot of like reserves to even drive speakers that you're used to power with bigger amplifiers. So um, feel free to try out. Maybe you have worked with them before and you know their capabilities, but it is really impressive what this uh, these small burst power amplifiers can do. But the main point about this is it's just easy to install. So you are already above the ceiling. You only need a quick cable to uh, a short cable to your loudspeakers. Um, and it's very fast and easy to install. All right, let's go to probably, let's say, the star of this show. Um, that is my Tessera 40X here. So the Tessera 40X is basically, a, I wouldn't say a new development, but it is a leap forward um, in our Tezera product range. So we've changed a lot on this device, but only under the hood. So you will probably not see any difference from outside, um, except of the appearance, of course. It has, much, uh, it has a different form factor, obviously, but it integrates into the Tezera ecosystem just in the same way as other Tezera devices. You can use it in uh, existing configuration files, just add it to an existing TMF file, it works nicely together with existing server, uh, Tessera server and Forte devices. And again, uses the same soft and firmware than other devices. I already mentioned it. What's definitely the biggest difference is the size of it. It is 70% smaller than our one rack unit uh, Tessera Forte processors. So that now allows you to mount a Tessera Forte X almost everywhere. So it can go under a table, directly under the conference table. It has a very silent fan, so you will not notice it. Or you can mount it behind the screen. And that's, I guess, a very famous place in current installs of conference rooms. So distance conferencing applications usually have a large main screen in the middle of the room. And that's 
nowadays the place to hide your AV gear. Uh, so we will make this very easy or at least as easy as possible with that bracket on, um, on behind. So this uh, plastic bracket um, that's mounted by default and it already has some strain re reliefs um, for your cabling on the back. So you can se securely mount them and avoid them from, from being plugged out if someone just doing something blindly behind the display accidentally plugging out cables. So this cannot happen with that uh, mounting bracket here. On the back of the device, you see that the main difference probably uh, to other DSPs that we have is the number of network ports. So the ratio between network ports and let's say audio connections is like, I would say we have more network ports now. <laughs> so, um, that's, that's already an indicator where we are heading to, right? So more and more devices are getting interconnected through uh, Ethernet. And um, of course, because it's so much uh, more, um, yeah, more, more easier to, to handle. So the ports are, if we start from the left, it begins with uh, a control port. As we are used with other Tessera 40 devices, we usually want to have a connection back to the company network or to the median, uh, to, to the AV network where our controller device sits, right? So if we have a third party control system, all of the AV media network, um, that should be connected to that port number one. Same with voice over IP. So if there is a voice over IP system running uh, at the site you want to use it, you can easily integrate it um, if you connect port number one to the same network as the VoIP system. It also supports VLAN tagging, so you can have your voice VLAN tagged on that port and uh, then it will be able to integrate in that um, voice system. Then the next four ports are what we call the media interfaces. As the name says, they are mainly used to connect with all of the biomp peripherals, like my microphones, um, amplifiers for speakers, then you could also connect um, an HD1 dialer device or an XUVT, so endless possibilities, if you will. And um, also they are powered by PoE+. So all those four ports uh, support PoE+, which means you don't need extra power supplies or an extra switch to operate the powered devices. So that's very versatile already, but you can also connect Dante devices to it. So by default, the Sierra 40 x supports both AVB and Dante on those four ports. Just connect it and you'll be able to use it. Of course, that is not a matter for our launch feature. This is something that we will think about when you have a manual configuration on that device. Something we can definitely look into uh, in a bit. So that was the network part. Um, the other ports that we have left is, of course, a USB port, because that's the number one connection, meanwhile, to our collaboration solutions. So you probably have a server there um, or a small form factor PC that runs maybe a Teams Rooms client, and you want to connect it as an audio device via USB. I mean, that's the way to go. We all know that. So it has a USB port right on that device. And there's also other analog inputs and outputs in case you want to add like analog amplifiers, some a gooseneck microphone, a belt pack. Um, in that case, you can connect it there. However, um, those are not automatically configured by uh, launch. So this is also a thing you would need a manual configuration for. At the same device, you can also find some GPIO ports and the power connector is a lockable connector. So it won't uh, be able to pull out accidentally. Right? So this can be screwed on and then it's um, fastened to the device. So that's the hardware. And it comes in three different versions. So we have, um, what, what I have here is the 40X 400. 400 stands for four echo cancelling channels. The 800 respectively for eight channels and 1600 for 16 channels. There are some limitations 
in how you can use those channels. Basically, when using buy and launch, it can use up to eight echo cancelling channels because it supports up to eight microphones. And as you know, in our product uh, range, it is always the case that we want to use um, a unique echo cancelling channel for each microphone because it just improves the performance. So therefore, up to eight microphones in a room will need eight echo cancelling channels. Therefore, the choice will be the X800. Now you may ask yourself, why do I need the 1600? The 1600, of course, is like the powerhouse for bigger systems. If you have a manual configuration and you just need a couple of AEC channels, um, this will be your resource. Add it to your network, and then your AEC channels can be freely assigned to all of the microphones that are in your system. Obviously, those AEC channels are not tied to analog inputs anymore. So there are no yellow connectors. Those AEC channels are virtual in that device and you can use them everywhere in your design. Okay, I guess that was enough talking about the hardware. Let's uh, talk about the intelligence behind it. And uh, therefore I would uh, tell a short story about that. Uh, so what is, what is buy at launch? Uh, and, um, First, you have to think about what our current situation is, maybe over the last year. Um, I'm, I'm sure that you all will agree with me that the, um, the demand for conference rooms and for collaboration spaces has grown immensely. Uh, so there's a, there's a large demand for good sounding rooms for quality video conference, for great audio in, in many rooms. And that now has popped up over the last couple of months and the demand is very high. Um, speaking for like uh, many European countries, they really had to catch up with technology, to be honest. And, and they really ordered devices and more and more. So it's like, it's happening a lot here. And um, so now the problem is that with open architecture DSPs, which, Forte basically is, and all of the Tessera product range, even our legacy products, they need to be programmed. I, I need a lot of time to get them prepared for the site that I want them to be implemented. So I need preparation time. I have to design a file. Maybe I'm lucky and I'm doing just a very similar project to what I've done a few months ago, so I can reuse an existing file, but still I need to adapt it because there might be a different quantity of microphones and speakers. And lastly, the EQing will be totally different. So I will bring it on site and I, I have to commission it. Uh, I have to set the gains, the EQs, and essentially I have to make it sound good and to adapt it to room performance. And that needs a lot of time. And you, were, you probably were also into situations where you would need a copy of yourself or maybe three of yourselves um, to get all of the rooms commissioned in time because they're not always accessible. You cannot just enter them when you have time, you have to wait. And um, so you know the struggle when setting up uh, systems. And so therefore our uh, product manager, management thought about how to streamline that process and how to make it a lot quicker. And the challenge was on one side, we have an open architecture DSP with those many options that you can have and many hardware configurations that are possible. And on the other side, the goal was build something that you just need to press a button and then everything sets up on its own. So to solve that problem, <laughs> our engineers locked themselves up uh, in a room and uh, didn't come out for weeks. And then finally came up with something. And that is on one side, a new technology that is now capable to detect BIOMP devices on the network, to locate them in the room acoustically, and to tune it to the room preferences. So every room is different, impulse response is different, and it can adapt all of the found hardware to that environment. So that's a great technology, and it used some sophisticated algorithms, I'm sure, but as you know, every algorithm is only as good as the data you feed it with. So the other thing that we did was 
our engineers collaborated with our tech support specialists and the applications engineers, which are located worldwide, like, like myself here. And um, we have some, without bragging, but we have some experience when setting up rooms because our customers won't call when everything works great. <laughs> they usually call when they are struggling setting up a room. And uh, therefore we have already some um, experience in fixing those rooms and make them sound good, even though the acoustics is not great. And that combined knowledge with the technology and the experience on setting up rooms has resulted in Bayern Blanche. And I believe it's time to test it and uh, you will be able to listen to it. So what I will do is I will press that button here. That is the launch button. Usually when you unpack and boot up the unit for the first time, it will slowly flash green. So it will draw some attention to someone unpacking the unit, right? And uh, in my case, it doesn't do that because it's already configured. But I can hit it again and then it will start the process again. But I hit, I have to hit it twice because in order to not like to avoid doing people just press the button and do this uh, accidentally, um, there is like a sanity check to push it twice. So you will notice that. Welcome to Buy Amp Launch. Press the launch button again to proceed. All right, pressing it twice. Now you see the microphone is turning off. It will reboot in a second. Launch LED is now flashing green and red, alternately. That means that launch is in prog uh, progress. So what it will now do is all of the detected devices on the network will now be rebooted. And when they are fully restarted, then the launch process will be engaged. So microphone is flashing already. Should be green in a few seconds. Okay, it's in a green state. Detecting the BIAMP microphones and speakers in your room. We will now start the launch process. Please remain quiet. Applying speaker tuning and adjusting level. Measuring the next speaker's performance in your room. Applying speaker tuning and adjusting level. Launch will now apply the optimized speaker tunings. Verifying the next speaker tuning. Obtaining a room reverb measurement. Verifying the next speaker tuning. Obtaining a room reverb measurement. Measuring the room's speech intelligibility. Buy amp launch is now complete and the system is ready to use. That was it. So the LED is turning green, um, steady green. So that means it is ready and uh, configured. So you heard a couple of things and I tried my best to keep track with that um, slide on, on the side so you see what's actually happening here. So we applied uh, a couple of EQs, uh, we did uh, room reverb measurements, even a steeper measurement in the end to verify um, the speech intelligibility is okay. So there's a lot of things going on in the background to ensure um, the quality, not only of the mic, but also of the speakers is adapted to the room in the best possible way. Okay, and now I should be able to actually use it, right? So that's, um, uh, let's build up something here um, and give my colleague Ian a call. Um, so I'm plugging in the USB port. Um, hopefully it will be detected correctly. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, I don't trust this laptop, honestly, but um, we will see. Joining the call here. There we go. Look at that. Hello, Marco. How are you doing? Hi, everyone. Hey, I'm doing great. Good to see you. Good to see you. As I have well. to look into the camera right here. That's, it's great you're joining us today, Rashid. That's awesome. Maybe you, maybe you could introduce Rashid to everyone, Marco. Sorry? Maybe you could introduce Rashid to everybody. Yes. Um, this is our CEO, CEO Rashid Skaf. I enjoyed my test call. Uh, that is by surprise, and I'm very glad that that, that that happened. That's pretty cool, actually. Yeah, Mark, well, I appreciate it. Ian uh, asked me to uh, come and surprise you a bit, so I thought I'd uh, call it. You sound fantastic, by the way, so it's uh, it's uh, nice to hear. I just wanted to thank all of the participants. I know uh, we have quite a few uh, around that are on the call yeah. uh, and have had uh, great calls all morning. So I just want to thank everybody. We're very excited about having you on the call and you taking the time to listen in to everything we have to, uh, to say about this. Uh, I love uh, uh, launch and what you guys have uh, hopefully seen here this, uh, this morning. Uh, it's been a uh, you know, three, three year journey and a 45 year journey, depending on who you ask uh, to get us to this point. Yeah. The launch is just uh, coming off the gates and, and uh, we're going to invest uh, greatly in this in the future as well. So you're getting in on the ground floor. I'm super excited. And again, Marco, I just want to say uh, hello and thank you for letting me join you for a few minutes. <laughs> thank you very much for your time. That's amazing. That's awesome. And you're right. A launch is a very powerful feature and it's fun to use. Yeah, absolutely. Well, very good. Well, I will let you get back to uh, <laughs> Stuart. And again, thanks everybody for letting me join in. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Bye, Rashid. <laughs> All right. Um, um, surprise. Uh, that, that was that was a good surprise, Ian. <laughs> thanks. Thanks for not warning me about that. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Good. Um, so. It worked, we've proved it, but that's not all of it. Um, what Launch is also capable to do is, basically it will help you um, with your documentation after installing the, the hardware. I'll show you how. So I will switch the screens. And open. The web GUI. As you can see, the Forte X can now be configured via a web interface. So you don't necessarily need to see your software anymore. Um, of course, there is some, there are some settings that you should use your software um, for, but basic settings and also, let's say, the settings that you need to integrate um, the Tessera DSP into any environment, the basic settings, network settings, VoIP settings, that all can be done via web interface. So that is a new approach, um, but it makes it also more accessible to IT specialists or to AV specialists on site for a, um, for a company, for instance. So they will be able to at least maintain their devices and um, also to readjust um, the audio, like if, if there's any room reconfiguration, they can just run launch again and um, there's no need for a bigger service call for that purpose. So at the splash screen, if I enter the web interface, I see the discovered devices on the network. In my case, that's a Forte X400. And there are some um, connected devices. In my case, it's only one. It's a PCM1A. That's the microphone. Going down to the audio section, that's basically here the, the fun part, right? Um, it will give you some feedback about the current levels in the system. You could change volumes. And in the upper part of the screen, you can now rerun launch if you want. So you can also start that feature remotely. 
And now you can define a target SPL. If the system comes out being too quiet, for instance, then you can uh, increase that target SPL or you can lower the target SPL if it's going too loud. You can select the UC vendor to use specific settings inside the device that are tailored to that specific UC. So you can select between Microsoft Teams, Google Meet, uh, Zoom, and if it's something else, just use generic. And now the highlight might be this one here, the report card. Oh, look at that. I was being not logged in for too long, but we can fix that. Default password, by the way, is the device's serial number. So when accessing the launch report card, it will open a new tab and it will give you an instant overview about the room characteristics and its performance. So the left side tells you what was the room performance before running launch. The right half of it is post launch. So you will see that there is some optimization already happened. So it is really a big difference in my case here uh, because that room isn't great. Um, you probably hear it even through my headset mic and through the ambient mic that there are some reflections. The, the walls are like, nah, it's, I should probably get more paintings in here and more uh, plants and flowers, <laughs> I don't know. But um, there is some um, echo in this room and you see it by that measurement here. So the initial speaker tuning was considered being at a medium level. What was okay was the reverb, oh, all right, and the noise was quite high. So after launch, it engaged some speaker enhancements to a high level, so that means it needed some EQing to adjust it to this room. Then the microphone enhancements is also set to medium, so a couple of filters might have been used to adapt the microphone to the room, and we've used medium noise reduction to accommodate for all of the noise in this room. But the, the message behind that is if you hand out this sheet to your customer, it will also be, well, a, a, a good reason to invest in a good audio system, right? So it's, it's not only black boxes you install and then it will turn out being an okay audio system. It is actually proof that the technology that you used um, has improved something. Right? It, is, it is doing something for you, and that is a good message. You can even download this thing as a PDF. If I hit the download button and open it right away, you will get it in this format. So you have your launch report card in the first page. And on the second page, you see some stats about the system. So which kind of 40X do you use? Then uh, the number of microphones detected, the number of speakers that are in use, uh, no, the number of speaker channels that are, that's, that's a big difference. So it uses two speaker channels to which you could theoretically connect four speakers, right? Two times eight ohm in parallel, four ohms. But in my case, it's two speakers, two channels, and the target SPL was set to 70, uh, 70 dB. It documents the firmware version and all of the peripheral devices how many microphones are connected and which microphones are connected. So that is really great for your documentation and into your uh, project folder. All right, let's go back to the main page. In the audio section also, you can uh, demo the azimuth tracker that we all know from Tessera. Then there are more options about network settings, of course, they are not avoidable because in, in some installations you will need to adapt the network settings. Um, also, same with VoIP. Um, in this other settings tab here, you will now be able to update firmware right from the web interface. So you can select your firmware file, then upload it through um, the web interface, and then it will just be applied inside the unit automatically. So there's no need, excuse me, to, ins um, to use Tessera software for this.
The last section I want to talk about is the troubleshooting section, because sometimes you are getting calls, uh, there's something wrong with the system, maybe someone has accidentally plugged out a cable, and um, we just want to know what's going on here. So if I, for instance, simulate an error and uh, just unplug the mic, you will suddenly see that um, alarm LED going red, and in the devices section, I should immediately get a yellow exclamation mark here. So that 40X400 has a problem, and also the connected devices are missing for this device. That's already a hint, right? If I look into the troubleshooting session uh, section, then you will see that uh, the mic is missing, it's not found, and um, it will just give you an instant hint what's wrong with the system without instructing your customer how to use the Tessera software, where to look for faults and so on. So that uh, just makes also the troubleshooting process a bit more easy and faster. This little program I had open to read the serial number, you have seen it earlier, is the Biom discovery tool. It is a piece of software that is basically only there to discover biome devices on the network, and it's not doing anything more. <laughs> so um, in case you wonder about the serial number or maybe the IP address of a certain device, you can download the discovery tool, open it up, hit discover devices button, and then it will give you a list of all of the devices found on the network. In this case also, we wanted to have a software tool that is not distracting people because it has too many buttons. It has one purpose, to find devices on the network, and it will give you the necessary information about it, and also provides a link to directly access the web UI. All right, I'll go back to devices, and it should be all green again. Wonderful. Okay, uh, I guess the timing is great. Um, as I predicted, we are, um, uh, we've needed some like, yeah, 35 minutes, a little bit longer than that. And we will certainly have enough time for uh, any questions if you may have any. So therefore, I guess we'll open up the QA and uh, yeah, see what we have. <laughs> Okay, Marco, thank you for that. That was amazing, as always. Uh, maybe you could go to your screen so that we can see you talking. Of course. You sure. to, thank you. Um, we have a lot of questions, so um, okay. which is great because we have a lot of people watching. So maybe we could try and whiz through these with quite uh, succinct uh, answers. I've tried to mm -hmm. answer as many as I can, but some of them are really interesting, so we need to put them out here. Yeah. So um, first one is any rack mount solutions for Forte X? Uh, not that I'm aware of, um, not yet. So currently we only deliver that bracket, um, but it is an often requested feature indeed. I've heard that a couple of times and even I am a fan of this idea. So um, I will make a note for that and this will be definitely a plus one. Great, well, we've got all the questions logged anyway. Oh, okay. Uh, Marco, so yeah. Okay. Um, Andy is asking, does uh, Tessera X do Dante and AVB at the same time? Yes, it does. Yeah, yep. yeah. So in a manual configuration, you can have um, your existing Tezira AVB running anyway, like seamlessly, um, and then you can set your Dante blocks as you are used to with uh, Tezira Forte, and then it will be available on all ports of the media section. Yeah, and this is effectively, I believe, because we have a TC5D built inside. Uh, in effect, inside sort of, the, sort of, yes. yeah. I need to say kind of, but the functionality yeah. of it is there. So. Yeah. yeah. Um, then we have, when integrating with an existing system, does the server I/O or the Forte have to have AVB? Uh, yes. Uh, if they are meant to exchange audio, yes. Otherwise, it's also okay to have islands if they don't need to exchange audio. So what I mean is you can still have a Tessera 40X and other server devices in the same environment, in the same configuration file, but as long as they don't need to send audio back and forth and exchange audio, um, you don't need AVB or Dante. 
Right, but if the, the server I/O is Dante and uh, we have Dante on the Forte, you could set up a Dante link between the two. Of right? course, yeah, yeah. In, in that, yeah. that's very true. Yeah, yeah. That. sorry yeah. for yeah. absolutely. No, that's absolutely. fine. Yeah, so yeah, you could you you don't have to have AVB, so you could do it if you have you'd need some sort of digital audio network, either AVB or Dante. But either way, you could accommodate. Absolutely, that. yeah. We basically don't care. Um, yeah, AVB it's, works it's automatically. Yeah, yeah. So you can use both. Sure. Excellent. Um, next question from Bruce. Can you connect uh, an AMP 450 BP to the Forte X? I'd like to power eight IC6 speakers off the AMP. Absolutely. Absolutely. That works. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, yeah. Uh, Tyler then made a great question, uh, which I replied, but I thought it was a great one to uh, bring to everybody. Does launch play from the actual Tessera X uh, hardware? So is there a speaker in there? Or does it play from the detected speakers? And he clarified he wants to know because if the Tessera X is behind a screen or in a rack room, obviously it's not going to be heard. Yeah, it will it will play out of the speakers. So the first step in launch is it will detect all of the hardware. So the Tessera Forte X already knows which devices are capable um, amplifier outputs. So and they yeah. will be used to send out the measuring tones then. Yeah. yeah, so just to be clear, Tyler, there is no loudspeaker built into the Tessera Forte X no. um, DSP no. unit. So it does definitely always use the equipment connected to the Tessera. Yeah. Uh, this is a very good question as well. Um, how does the system know that it is to look uh, at only devices in its room if it detects multiple devices on the network? This is from Chris. So I guess this is if you have multiple Tessera Forte Xs connected to a in-house network and you want yeah. it to only discover the devices inside the, this particular room. Yeah, great question. Um, I would need to clarify that, uh, but my hunch is that you can have multiple Tessera Forte X as well as Devio SCX connected by the control ports. But as long and as you it, don't mix the media ports and put them yeah. on shared network, then they will be fine. So as long as you don't mix them and make them like visible to other devices by crossing the media ports and make them like on a, connect them with a bigger network, um, as long as you keep them separated. Then that was my understanding as well. And yeah. just to clarify the, mm -hmm. the ports on the back of the Forte X, there's one control port and four yeah. media ports. Yeah. So if you connect the control the port, yes. yes, but if you connect your um, microphones, your parlay mics and your amplifiers to the media ports and keep the control port connected to the in-house network, then the Forte will discover the devices on the media ports and configure via the control port is the way that I is understand true. it. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Um, can the launch button be disabled in software? Question from Joe. Hmm. So it doesn't uh, light up green anymore, probably. Or ah, oh, no, I know. I, I know think what you it's mean. So that, so that people somebody... don't have. I get the point. Um, I believe not yet, but I. Um, I don't think so. I haven't seen this as an option, uh, but I don't want to be. I'm. I'm not a hundred percent sure yet because there's always something. There might be a setting into Zero software, a hidden setting somewhere. So therefore, I'm not 100% sure, and I would like to answer this question offline after I have confirmed with my colleagues. Yeah, I've certainly not seen anything, but you're absolutely I right. Either. There could be something no. hidden. And, and if it isn't there, I think it's a valid point to bring up um, yep. for enhancement. Yep. So, uh, great Very question. Good. Great um, question, yes. Yeah, Terrace has asked a question, and several other people have asked this as well. So when you have um, use to Sura launch, uh, sorry, BIAM launch. Can you download the project file as a backup? That's uh, that that is a common question, and um, uh, unfortunately, not. Um, BIAM launch is a closed system. It is used for standalone use, and we have pretty much locked down uh, the accessibility of that file that underlies BIAM launch and. Maybe it helps to clarify that a little bit when I show you the Tessera software. This is my webinar mic, um, but if I disconnect and then 
hit the connect button again. Um, in the overview of my, of my office network, I see now there, there, there's a regular BIM to uh, Sierra Forte, which is running my presentation mic, and there's the Forte X running BIM launch. You will not be able to connect to it, so connect to system is grayed out. Um, so this is very much locked down. It is only for the purpose of pushing a button, and then it will all happening inside that unit. Um, there's no access to it. Yeah, I think the other reason that a backup is actually not necessary is every time you press launch, it does, does the same thing, and it will it will come Correct. to the same conclusion with the same internal design anyway. So ultimately, you don't yes. really need a backup. Understand the question about why you might okay. ask that, but. Uh, next question from John, is Forte X Microsoft Teams room certified? Um, work is in progress on that one. Uh, so the thing is that um, if you look at the hardware, uh, it has all of the features that it will work with Microsoft Teams. Um, what is, to my understanding, not yet the case is that we're getting whitelisted. The problem is that even though it is the same hardware and it works just in the same way as an XUBT, um, they cannot just tick the box and say, oh, okay, then it would be the same with that. We have to recertify it to get whitelisted. White so um, if there's a, a very strict demand to be whitelisted on Microsoft Teams rooms, clients as of now, before we have achieved the full certification, um, then you really have to use the XUBT as the interface box to your um, Teams Rooms client. But uh, be assured that this is a, a number one priority for us to get the certifications done. Absolutely. Another question, well, a series of questions from Stephen. Um, can you use the Tessera software uh, to connect to and make adjustments to the settings once it's been set up by launch? So can you run launch and then use that as a basis from your, for your adjustments from then on? Um, also, because of the same reason why we, we have locked down the, the launch configuration, um, it is not accessible in any way. So you cannot reuse the, the, the measurements, unfortunately. Okay. And Stephen yeah. then goes on to ask um, if I want to add other products like a TechX or a HD1, for example, um, how do I go about that? That's a very good question. I forgot to mention that, or maybe uh, I was a bit too to brief on that, um, the HD1 is already configured um, by default, and also you need to you don't need to rerun launch to make it work. Um, pretty much the uh, the launch configuration has an existing HD1 block with the default uh, device ID. So you just need to connect the HD1 to your media ports. It will power up, and then if VoIP is configured correctly, it will be ready to use. So that's one thing. And I believe that it might be very much the same with the Tech X, although I guess the Tech X will be configured a little bit differently than the usual Tessera devices. So this is like still TBD because it's not released yet, um, but I'm sure that there will be some options um, to use launch uh, with the Tech X as well. It is definitely possible to use the HD1 with launch. Yeah. As of now. Okay, great. Uh, another question from Bruce. Can you use launch with divisible rooms? Um, no, that is a special application that needs some, yeah. Yeah, so you just have to go deeper the... than what, what an automated system can do. So, therefore, this is like a yeah. manual. So, you could use the Tessera X for that, but the launch would not do, give you anything. You'd have to manually make the design for the divisible rooms and, and what you want to happen when. So. Uh, Chris is asking, is there a default host name for the Tessera X? I guess mm -hmm. he's, when he's trying to find it on the on the network. Yeah, the default host name is Tessera 40X serial number in one string. Yeah, and of course you can use the Discovery app to find the devices on Absolutely. the network anyway. So. Absolutely, um, yes. Uh, let's see the next question. Carl is asking, how does the room reverb compensation work? <laughs> I'm not sure if that, that is too much of a thing. What, what I know what definitely is a way to accommodate for room reverb is an RT60 measurement per octave 
so you know which frequency range is more critical to create room reverb. And now you can avoid those frequencies in your speaker tuning. That is one way of doing it. If we do anything else, I don't know, but that's definitely one way to accommodate for room reverb. So in essence, it's a combination of close level control and yeah. EQing of the output of the loudspeakers to accommodate the Absolutely. room correctly. Yes, yeah. correct. Perfect. Um, I think we might be getting, oh no, sorry, I've got to scroll down. I think we may be running out of time, so I'll try and find the choice questions. Okay, Robert is asking, how do you access the setup for analog inputs and outputs? Mm, same thing here, that needs um, a default, no, not a default, um, a manual configuration. So you need to wipe off the launch file and then build your own file. Uh, but you, you could use um, those those templates, for instance, that we have. Um, yeah. I'm not sure if there are templates for 40x yet, but you can use a regular Tessera template and then just change the I.O. blocks. Yeah. Okay, Jamie is asking, I think this is going to be the same answer, does the AVB um, support explicit as, uh, as well as implicit uh, connections? Um, good question. Um, I would have thought I it does I, if you if you erase the design and start from scratch. So, I've, I guess I've heard that explicit AVB is not supported in 40x. Uh, okay. Maybe not yet. Um, it is. Well, it, it can be easily done in software and just try to compile it into a 40x with um, um, explicit AVB blocks. But I'm I'm very certain that um, it's not supported yet. On, okay, on so Jamie, we'll we'll come back directly to yeah. you on that. Yeah. Okay. Um, Chad is asking, is there any switch management type function in Tessera Forte X? Uh, mm -hmm. For example, can this be connected with an existing network that requires devices not to not use RSTP? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, there are some very basic settings, but they are. I would say designed for our own network configurations, um, which means that um, if, if you have a standalone to zero network with a couple of devices, like a couple of TC5 switches, maybe uh, to zero amplifiers in a redundant network mode, um, those options are for these scenarios. They are not made for interfacing with different switching protocols of other manufacturers. Um, in fact, it is RSTP enable disable, and it is IGMP snooping enable disable. That's basically what we can adjust on the network side. Great, thank you. A uh, couple of other good questions, and I think we'll leave it at the last two. Does uh, launch only work with biamp amps and speakers? B great question. Great question. Uh, we do recommend using biamp speakers because, th like the the, the Zono CIC six speakers are the ones that we've used to develop launch. We, we've built it on these speakers, so therefore you can um, like uh, accept, ex expect this to work in uh, the best possible way, which doesn't mean that it won't work with other speakers, but w that there are some limits for our capabilities to EQ speakers that um, don't really match to the room or to our devices. So it is not a very strict no, but it is not supported really. Yeah. Uh, we've had another question come in, which is really great. So we've got two more questions still. Can there be an email notification for when an issue happens with hardware in the system? For example, oh. a mic gets unplugged. Also a great question. Yes, that's possible through SageView. So not directly out of the Tessera, but you can use SageView to monitor all of your Tessera devices on the network and then fire up an email if there's um, if there's any problems with it. Yes. Yep. And just a summary of SageView, that's a free application that we uh, run and you it allows you to monitor and update multiple Tessera devices and Devio devices also uh, in an enterprise situation. So it, it really takes uh, care of monitoring of faults and allowing for updates to be yeah. done in out of office time. So, uh, and then the last question from Dylan: uh, Do you need a reference mic for launch, or will a Parley mic work for speaker EQ adjustments and the process? A Parley mic will work. Um, 
that measurement mic is just again um, that that's hanging here behind me. Uh, that is only for the purpose of the demo, so you will be able to hear what's coming out of the speaker because it didn't work that well with my headset mic. Um, the poly microphones will be reconfigured in a way to make a measurement microphone out of them, <laughs> just for the short period yes. of the launch process. Yes. And just to be clear, just in case there's any doubts, you can use any of the Parley mics. So you can use the pendant mic or the ceiling mic or the tabletop mic um, yes. in, in these projects. So it's not limited to the pendant mic at all. So. Absolutely. Okay, that's uh, the end of the question. Some really great questions. Thanks for everybody. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I'll hand it back to you, Marco, to uh, wrap up. All right. Thank you. Um, so then, yeah, I will, I will make it short. Um, thanks so much for, for joining me. Uh, we had a great attendance and that's... Uh, Awesome to see. You had some good questions. And again, I hope that this was helpful for you and um, was a few good takeaways for this today's session. And um, with that, I want to say thank you again and um, I will see you next time. Cheers. Bye bye.